Hello friends, in this video we will be synthesizing cinnamic acid via the Perkin reaction from benzaldehyde. Cinnamic acid is an aromatic acid with an alpha beta unsaturation double bond. For this synthesis, you will need 10 ml of benzaldehyde, 15 ml of acetic anhydride, 5 g of sodium acetate, 15 g of anhydrous sodium carbonate, and approximately 15 ml of 37% hydrochloric acid. Start by fixing a 250 ml 3-in-a crown bottom flask on a stand using a clamp. A magnetic steering bar was placed inside. A plastic powder funnel was placed on top and 5 grams of sodium acetate was added to the flask. 10 ml of benzaldehyde was measured out in a graduated cylinder and was transferred to the flask. Next, 14 ml of acetic anhydride was added to the flask. The liquids were transferred in a circular fashion to wash down any sodium acetate powder that got stuck on to the funnel. The funnel was then removed. The round bottom flask was placed inside a crystallizing dish. A thermometer adapter with a mercury thermometer was placed in one of the side necks. Silicon grease was fused to provide an airtight seal. The other side was stoppered with a solid penny head stopper. A Dimroth condenser was attached to the center neck. Liquid paraffin was poured into the crystallizing dish to create an oil bath. The hot plate stirrer was turned on and the water was circulated through the Dimroth condenser. The reaction mixture was heated on the oil bath at 160 degrees Celsius for 1 hour and then at 180 degrees Celsius for another 3 hours. While it is getting reflexed, let us see the reaction that is taking place. The reaction that is going on is known as Perkin reaction. The Perkin reaction involves base catalyzed aldol condensation of an aromatic aldehyde and an acid anhydride to give a alpha beta unsaturated aromatic acid. The aromatic aldehyde here is benzaldehyde and the acetic anhydride is the acid anhydride. The alkali salt sodium acetate act as the base catalyst. The alpha beta unsaturated aromatic acid formed is the cinnamic acid. Next we will need a steam distillation system. All the glass wares and connections you will see here are part of the steam distillation system. In the center we have a 500 ml 3 in a crown bottom flask and this will be our reaction flask. Approximately 50 ml of hot water was initially poured into the reaction flask. Then the contents from the previous flask which were reflexed for 4 hours was transferred into the bigger flask. The previous flask was rinsed with approximately 50 ml of hot water and that too was transferred to the larger reaction flask. Then a saturated sodium carbonate solution was added to the reaction flask until the pH gets to neutral. This can be very easily noticed as the effervescence will stop when it gets neutral. Now we will have the steam distillation system functioning. The flask on the left side is the steam generator flask. It has two openings. One of the opening is a long tube that goes into the water present in the flask. The second opening has a tubing attached to it and this carries the steam to the flask in the center which is the reaction flask. Ideally the steam generator flask should be of larger size so that effective steam could be generated. In my case I did not have any large flask with 29-32mm joint as the steam adapter that I had could only fit to that size. Water in the steam generator flask was boiled using a Bunsen burner. Steam travels through the tubing to the reaction flask through its center neck. The center neck has a long tubing inside which goes into the contents of the flask. The left side neck was closed using a solid penny head stopper. 
On the right side we have the distillation head and a thermometer. A Frederick condenser was also connected to the distillation head. When the hot steam gets bubbled through the reaction mixture, it heats up very quickly and the water carries the unreacted benzaldehyde with it. This could be easily noticed by the oily distillate that passes over into the condenser. Steam distillation was continued until all the oily droplets passes over. When we start getting clear distillate, the procedure was stopped. The contents of the reaction flask was cooled and filtered by vacuum filtration method. This removes most of the resinous unwanted byproducts. The contents were poured into a larger 1000 ml beaker and stirring was turned on. Concentrated 37% hydrochloric acid was added dropwise until the evolution of carbon dioxide stops completely. The solution also turns milky at the end. The beaker was then chilled in the fridge overnight. Next day we have lot of white fluffy precipitate and this is the crude cinnamic acid. It was then vacuum filtered to collect the crude product. It was then recrystallized from hot water and these are the purer crystals. It was vacuum filtered and pure product was collected. Moving on to the calculation part. The limiting reactant is benzaldehyde. One molecule of benzaldehyde should theoretically yield one molecule of cinnamic acid. So 106.12 grams of benzaldehyde should give 148.16 grams of cinnamic acid. Here we have taken 10.5 grams of benzaldehyde. So the theoretical yield is 14.66 gram. The practical yield was a terrible 3.5 gram and the percentage yield is 23 percentage only. That's all in this video. These are all my Patreon supporters who are financially helping me so that I am able to purchase new equipments and chemicals required for doing new videos. You can also support me via Patreon or PayPal. The links of both of them are given in the description. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell button for notifications regarding my new videos. Thank you.